Good morning, Victory Word. Good morning. And Word family. It's another good day to have a God day. And we're just thankful for this being, what Sunday is this? Fourth. Fourth Sunday. <laughs> it's the fourth Sunday in January. Yes. I looked out the window this morning and I told Lady T, it's beginning to look <laughs> a lot like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> the snow is today. And so we're just going to be thankful. Amen. Amen. We are thankful. And shortly after this service, myself and my strong young son will be out there. Mark Jalen will be shoveling snow. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Amen. Victory word. It's just another good day. Um, uh, also, I just want to say, we may lose internet connection. If we do, just stand by for a few minutes, and we'll come back to you as soon as we can. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm just thankful this week of Victory Word. We uh, completed our our, our vision, uh, vision meetings, rather, and they were so positive. And I'm thankful for all of our members showing up to the, to our meeting, whether it was on Zoom or live in the sanctuary last Sunday. We're mm-hmm. thankful. Yes. And we're grateful. Mm-hmm. We're looking forward to doing great things this year. Mm-hmm. And so, Victory Word, I, I just want to continue to encourage you to know that God is still in charge. Yes, he is. Yes. And we have to stay faithful and we have to stay focused. Faithful and, and being focused. That's that are the two things that are necessary for us to make it through this through this year without losing our minds, being peaceful, being thankful, yes. being prayerful, being being prayed up, having our praise and our worship mm-hmm. to be focused, yes. to be focused driven this year. Yes. Amen. 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 So let us just continue, continue, continue. To move up the King's Highway. Hallelujah. We're moving forward. We're going forward because yes. although we're going through, we are not through going. Amen. And so, God. Lady T is going to bring us our announcements and bring us good, good words this morning. Amen. 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 Praise God this morning. Yeah. Praise God, somebody. All right. <laughs> Praise God, everybody. <laughs> For this is the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing in it, even though some of us may have tears in our eyes on this morning, yeah. rejoice in the fact that he gave you this day, amen, amen. with the blood still running warm in your veins and the use and activities of your limbs. Praise God somebody, yes. for he is good despite it all. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, Victory Word. Good morning, Word family. We welcome you to our cyber sanctuary this morning where the feast of the Lord is going on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on in and take a seat and, and, you know, just get ready to for the Lord to bless you on today. He already done bless you by allowing you to rise. So let him continue to bless you throughout this whole day and this whole week. So prepare yourselves. To receive what God has for you on today. Amen. 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 On this fourth Sunday, January the 23rd, my Lord, we always would like to uh, recite our victory word vision first and foremost. Amen. Amen. So let's go there. Let's go there. Here we go. The victory word Word church church is a place place where you will experience experience freedom freedom in worship, connection connection with with others others, through life-giving relationships. Compassion for the lost and the teaching of God's word in love. A place where lives are being changed, hurts are being healed, and hope is being restored. We are empowering lives to live purposely for him. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Our quote of the week for today. Patience is what you do while you wait. Mm. Think about it. (laughs) Patience is what you do while you wait. Thank you, Kendall Taylor. And for those of you who don't know who he is, that's 
this Fantasia's husband. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. Patience. Woo, Jesus, give us patience. Whew. All righty. Next Sunday, please note next Sunday, the fifth Sunday of January, January the 30th, we will have virtual only service. Amen. 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 And I know some of y'all are glad the service is virtual only today <laughs> because if the Lord put it on your heart to, to travail and get to the building today, you might, you might have been questioning him. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we right. can't question God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so remember next Sunday will be virtual only service as well. So get ready to tune in. Stay tuned in. Amen. Listen, it is first fruits season. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. From now until the month of April. Resurrection you, Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Plant those seeds so that you can receive with us saith the Lord for you. And it says that honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruits of all your increase so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Amen? Amen. That's Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. So let's honor God, amen, with our first fruits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do y'all know that, and I don't say this every Sunday this month, but this month marks Victory Words' 10-year anniversary. Amen. Amen. Years. We've been around a decade. Oh, my God. <laughs> God is so good and he is so faithful. Yes, he and is. We need to be rejoicing in the fact that he has kept us this yes. far along this journey. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's get ready and get it in our minds that we're going to celebrate. Whenever it's allowable to celebrate in a more comfortable fashion, we are going to celebrate victory word. Yes, Amen. we are. Yes, we, we are, are worthy to be celebrated. Yes. Listen, birthdays this week, um, or birthdays for the month of January, we, we, we want to celebrate all who are celebrating a major accomplishment or a birthday anniversary for this month of January mm -hmm. and celebrating this week on Thursday, January the 27th. Our own little sister, Winter Cash. All right, yes. Winter. All right, Winter. You celebrate, girl. <laughs> we pray, we pray that all will have a blessed anniversary and that the good Lord continues to bless you all to celebrate many, many, many more anniversaries. Amen, amen. 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 Listen, as we transition into our time of giving, um, I, I just heard my pastor say, that your living is connected to your giving. Amen? Amen. Your living is connected to your giving. And I, I'd just like for you to keep in mind that we want to do better than we did last year. We want to start off the year of giving with greater expectations than last year. Amen? Amen. And with greater expectations comes more trust and consistency in your individual giving. Plant the seed and set the standard of how you want God to sow into your life this calendar year and be obedient to the standard and watch God do the rest. Amen. Right. So as you prepare for your giving, um, please take note of the various options you have to do so. You can go to our website, www.victorywordchurch.org, and you can hit the giving button. And you can use your debit card to continue to help in the building of the kingdom of God, and that is via PayPal. You can also make your donations via Giveify. And for those who aren't comfortable with either of those options, go ahead, use that mail. You know, put stick it in, the, stick your check in the mail, and mail it to BWC at PO Box three six one two zero zero, Gross Point, Michigan four eight two three six. We are incredibly grateful to those who give so regularly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and may God continue Amen. to bless you. If you need to reach Pastor Mike or myself, just give us a call on the church office phone at 313-243-4512. Also, if you have need for a special prayer, please make your prayer request at www.victoryword.prayerrequest at gmail.com and go to our website, or go to our website, www.victorywordchurch.org, 
and hit the prayer request tab and it will go directly to our pastor and we will pray with and for you. Let's remember always to keep our pastors and our leaders in our prayers. Yes. Amen. 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 The frontliners for our spiritual care. Amen. Um, our prayers are purposeless. We first want to um, uh, give our condolences and our sincere our prayers to our White family and the passing of Sister Shanita White. We got the news this morning that she passed. So please send your prayers out to our sisters and our brothers that God helps us all through this time. Um, prayers and your condolences are definitely appreciated. Um, our Word family, our, our Victory Word Church family, Pastor D.L. and First Lady Harvell and New Life Ministries Worldwide family, the Spirit of the Church and its Army family, Pastor Remarco Pittman and the New Prosperity Baptist Church, Minister April Pittman, Bishop Leonard Gardner and family, Pastor Gregory and Lady Smith and the Zion Hill Baptist Church, Pastor James and First Lady Reigns, and the Ecclesia Christian Ministries, Pastor Doran and Lady Morrison and Higher Praise Worship Center. Pastor James and First Lady Minnick and the Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church, Spiritual Israel Saginaw Temple, and Elder uh, Joe Grace, amen. MJ and Mark Jalen Oliver, our mother Claudia Oliver, our grandfather Bishop Tillman Oliver, Minister LaRue Clay, Sister Marsha White and family, Pastor James Marks and family, and our Victory Word Church located in the country of India, Pastor Daniel Mose and family, and our Victory Word Church. Located in the country of Kenya, Minister Carol Hicks, the, the family, my family, of the late Jerry Lathan, the family of the late Stephen Donaldson, Jewel Jones and family, Alicia Campbell, Malcolm Swilly, former Chief James Craig, Detroit Police and Fire Departments, all of the school systems and students on all levels, our first responders and health care and essential workers, and a special prayer for the sick and shut in and the bereaved. If you have anyone to add to our prayers of purpose list, please give the church uh, office a call at 313-243-4512. Don't forget to go to our Facebook page every Monday for the awesome anointed word of the week. And remember, we are living, living our, our future, future now. now. Hallelujah. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Put those blessed hands together as we prepare ourselves and our minds to receive the word on today. Uh, put that, you know, make sure your food's on slow cook, you know, don't be getting up and down, going into the kitchen. Sit on down and get ready for the word, amen. Get ready for this spiritual word so that you can enjoy that natural word after this. Hallelujah. So, as I present to some and introduce the others, I want you to just Come on in, take a seat, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, as we receive the word from our pastor, the Shepherd of Victory Word Church, Detroit, Michigan. Let's show some love for our own Dr. M.K. Oliver. Hallelujah. Good morning, Victory Word and Word family. I've been waiting all week long to worship God with an anointed vessel just like you. Take your loved one by the hand, take my hand, and just say it's another good day, another good day. to have a God day. Have a God day. I, love I love you to life, and Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus loves, you loves you all the more. All the more. Let's just thank God and give him yes. praise on this morning yes. Yes. for all that he has done. Amen. Victory word. And word family, we need to know that God has smiled on us. Yes. So just help me, just one verse. One verse. This is worth the price of admission today. One verse. <laughs> God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has 
smiled on me. He's been good to me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has, he smiled on me, he's been good to me. That's all I got. Amen. That's all I got. Amen. 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 We thank God because truly God has smiled on all of us today. He has blessed us, even through challenges, even through situations, even through circumstances, even through obstacles, even through our ups and our downs, he's been good to us. And so we have to be thankful. We have to definitely be thankful because every day that we wake up, he gives us another chance. He gives us another chance to be happy. He gives us another chance to be peaceful. He gives us another chance to show others that there is a reality in serving a true and living God. And so this morning we ought to have a thankful heart and praise on our lips for all the blessings that he has already bestowed upon us. Amen. Amen. Lord, let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come before you this morning first and foremost saying thank you because you didn't have to do it, but you did. And we say thank you, Lord, for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs and allowing us to see this day. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you not just because you are God, but we thank you and we praise you because you are our Father. And holy is your name. Father, you didn't bring us this far to leave us. And so we thank you for you directing our path, for you guiding our, our footsteps, Lord. We thank you for protecting us from danger, seen and unseen. We thank you for keeping us from hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, we thank you for protecting our families and our loved ones and our friends and all those that are connected to us, Lord. So, Father, we just want to give you the honor. We want to give you the praise. We want to give you the glory this morning. So now, dear Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my strength and my redeemer. And it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. And we thank God. Amen. If you were, would you uh, turn your Bibles, turn your Bibles to Matthew, Matthew, the 13th chapter, starting at the first verse, and I'm reading from the New International Version. And the Word of God says, that same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it. While all the people stood on the shore, then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? 
he replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them, whoever, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Victory word. I want to preach from the sermon topic or teach this morning from the sermon topic. The season of more. The season of more. I want you to look at your loved one or if you're at home by yourself, just speaking into the atmosphere. This is my season. Of more. of more. This is my season of more. My season of more. Okay. A victory word and word family. Uh, in 2022, in staying the course, you have to know, trust, and believe that this is your season of more. Uh, as I was studying it, and this is a two-part series, I'm going to do part two next Sunday on this same sermon topic, the season of more. Word family, ask yourself, what is it, what more do you want? What is it in this season of your life do you want more of? Because if we stay the course then we should be asking God for more peace, for more joy, for more understanding, for more long-suffering, for more, when I say long-suffering, being able to stand in a position to wait on God. More, more. Turn to your neighbor, to your loved one, and just say, more, more, more. I'm looking for more. I'm looking to have more understanding. I'm looking to have more insight. I'm looking to have more diligence. I'm looking to have more drive. I'm looking to have more discipline. I'm looking to have more insight. I'm looking to have more godly relationships. I'm looking to have more peace within myself. I'm looking to have more patience with others. I'm looking to have more forgiveness in my heart towards others and even to myself. I'm looking for more, more uh, ways to serve a true and living God. I'm looking for more ways to be a greater servant. I'm looking for more ways to be humble in my walk with God. Ask yourself the question, what more do you want from the Lord? In the word today, Jesus tells, he, he tells the, 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 the story about the farmer who sowed seeds. And I, I, I really don't want to open that part of the, of the text up, not just yet. What I want us to focus on this morning, and I'm not even going to be with you long today, but there are some things that I need for you to really unpack in these first few months of the new year because it is very important to get your foundation together for where you want to go and how you want to grow and how you want to sow so you can grow and be more laser focused on whatever it is you want more of. The, the 13th verse says, that same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. And such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it. So Jesus had to get in the boat to separate himself from the crowd that was coming to hear what he had to say. And so he got into the boat and he began to
to give those parables mm -hmm. about the seed and how it was to be sown. And then the disciples asked the question. They said, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more. Let's stop right there. Today, I need to ask the body of Christ, what is it do you have? The word says, he said, whoever has will be given more. You, in order to, to get where you want to go, you got to have some substance right now. Amen. I've been teaching for the last at least two years about us having a kingdom consciousness. Mm -hmm. In this text, it said the people gathered. They wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. But and I'm going, I'm going to I'm going to uh to bring it into the time we're living in right now. Church people been gathering forever, listening to the preacher. And the preacher has tried to break it down and give you this and, 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 and make it so you can understand it. But when you become kingdom minded, as Jesus told the disciples, he said, uh, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you. Victory word, word family. The keys of the kingdom of heaven, the tools that we need to unlock our understanding, I've been sharing it for the last few years now about us coming out of being a just good churchman and to have kingdom consciousness. And so Jesus says, he replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Victory word, if you are not where you want to be, it's because you are still looking at your life from a churchman perspective. That's right. I'm going to say it today. In order to get where we want to be, you have to come up out of yourself, go to another level in God, and really trust him, not with your mouth, but with your actions. If you want to grow, you have to be in a mindset, as this scripture has said, pick uh, uh, Jesus gives us the parable of how the seed fell. Mm -hmm. You need to decide, are you shallow ground or are you, are you fertile ground? Because the seed has been given. The word has been given. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a flashy pastor. I'm not trying to, to, to spin you. I'm trying to do exactly what my pastor Pastor D.L. Harville had given to me, and that is for us as a church, as a church family, as individuals to do what? Work the word of God. Yes. Yes. You have to work this word. You can't just hear it and be hearers only. We must be, we must be doers of the word. Amen. I look at this because I always, and I've told you, that I don't teach the Bible. I teach the principles of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Jesus is talking to the people that came in crowd. And I'm saying that's the same way church people are. He, we have to be, uh, he had to teach in parables because they didn't get it. Well, we, Victory Word, should get it by now. We're 10 years old. Come on now. We should understand the, the principles of giving, of, of reaping and sowing. And, and yes, there are things that come up in our life that we have no control over, that tries to, to hinder us emotionally, tries to stop us spiritually, has to tries to stop us physically, stops us financially. But I'm here to proclaim to you today that you have to overcome all of those things because those things are the things that stop us and hindering, uh, hinders us from getting those things which God has prepared for us. Amen. We have to stop looking at our prosperity based upon this world system. 
And I'm not telling us for us not to prepare and not to save and not to do all of those things that we've been uh, neglecting. But I am here to tell you, this is the year for you to look for the pearl. All right. All right. Look for the pearl. I said it Sunday, last Sunday, how Jesus told Peter to go down to the water, to the, to the seashore, and get the pearl to take care of the taxes. God has things set up in the heavenlies to take care of us, but we can't get beyond our natural resources. And since we can't get past our natural resources, then we forget that God is our source. And we need to understand this, this scripture, if that, that part of the verse said, whoever has will be given more. Hmm. Who has what? Them who has what? The faith mm -hmm. to trust and believe God, even though everything around me tells me to go the opposite direction. To trust my own instincts, my own. I'm trying to get out of trusting my instincts and start trusting God's word and understand he will give me the discernment. Because a lot of times we base things on how our emotions lead us. How they guide us. And look, there's no excuse for kingdom people not to be kingdom minded. And stop waiting on the pastor. Stop waiting on your friends. Stop waiting on whoever it is you're waiting on to tell you something. The word of God is, 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 should be in us enough that we, we should be able to trust the word to, that we know that God will do just what he said he would do. But while we wait, we have to be patient. And I'm here to encourage someone that's listening to me that even though you don't have what you think you have, should have, I'm here to tell you you have just what God, you have enough to do what God needs for you to do for your, for your growth and for your moving forward. Because this is the season of more. Now, in order to receive the more in righteousness, then you have to have the mind of Christ. Because if we are not careful, the other, the other part of more, we can bring more hell and more damnation to us as well, depending on how our mind is set. I want more peace, not more confusion. I want more joy, not more dysfunction. I want more of God's uh, abundance and God is saying I don't want any more of your excuses we have to be driven spiritually to understand that our, our natural plight in life is solely based on our spiritual connection to the God that lives in us that woke us up this morning so stop making excuses. If you're not moving forward, it's because you, you refuse to move. You just want to stand still. And another thing, Vicky Word, stop giving advice to people that you won't even take the advice that you give to them for your own good. We are good, the church people, we as churchmen, we are good at giving advice to other people, what they should do, how they should live. And they looking at us like, how you living? How you trusting? How you believing? How are you moving in faith? How are you? And let me just say this, because pastor is not on a soapbox today. I'm trying to free somebody today to, to, to break the shackles of, of oppression that you've hold it, that you're holding on yourself because of your lack of belief and faith. Listen, if you already know the results of something, that doesn't you don't need faith for that. When you already know the outcome of it, the Bible plainly says, 
Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. It doesn't get any plainer than that. So if you can figure it out already, that doesn't take faith. And you can write this down. Faith and living safe is not synonymous to each other. And when I say safe, I'm saying playing life safe. I'm not going to take no chances. I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that. And there are certain things you're not supposed to take chances with. But what I am telling you is be connected to your heavenly father. So when he tells you to move left, even though you've been moving right for the last 15, 20 years and right feels good to you, when he tells you to go left, you shouldn't be second guessing yourself. You ought to just move left because if you're connected to God, you know that's him speaking because the Bible in the word says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Who you following? In this season and the seasons to come, we have to have an ear to hear what the Lord is speaking to us collectively, corporately, and individually. Because there is a word from the Lord. For each of us. But it's up to us to hear what he's saying. And if I want more, I really want more of him first. Do you really want more? Because this is the season of more. And I'm here to tell you, keep your eyes on the prize. And let me tell you, because even your pastor, even I get uh, discouraged at times. When you when you feel you've given your all to something and you're looking around and you see other people uh, prospering and their children prospering and, and you see their life going as being elevated and you're looking at, at yourself, right there you've made a mistake because now you're comparing what God has done for someone else to what you want him to do for you, and then you asking him, why not me? The question is, not why not me, but it should be, Lord, I know I'm next. All right. All right. We, 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 we spend too much time looking out, mm -hmm. looking around, comparing our lives to somebody else, when you should be thankful for the life and what God has given you right now. Stop looking at others and thanking for what you have right now. Ought to be a praise in your mouth when right now, worshiping your spirit right now. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, yes. we made it three years so far, almost going on three years in a pandemic situation, and God is still God. And he's still blessing people. And he's still a God of a second chance. He's still a God of multiple chances. Why? Because he is our father and holy is his name. And we have to understand that God is doing a new thing in this season. I never thought we'd be sitting here doing virtual service. But we are thankful that we have the platform to reach even more. To let people know it's all right to fall down. I'm just challenging you today to get back up again. Yes, get, up. get up. Shake the dust off of you. Yes. We fall down, but we get up. Yes. This, is, this is the more season. Go for more. Look for more. Yes. Ask for more. Yes. Do more. Mm -hmm. Grow more. Mm -hmm. Sow more. And watch God do something great in your life. Yes. He is a God. He is a God of a second chance. Mm -hmm. He is. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Yes. And it also tells me in that scripture in Hebrew, for without faith it is is impossible. Say what you want to say. 
Believe what you want to believe. The word of God says, for without faith, it is impossible. Did you hear what I just said? Impossible to please him. We walk by faith, not by sight. That's kingdom thinking. Because now you take all of the of all of your your strength, all of the things that you do, you take it off of you and you put it in God's hands because you trust him. And guess what, Victory Word? Your pastor sitting here in this chair this morning is really learning still how to trust in him more and take my hands off of it. Because if he said it, I have to believe it. And my belief should equate to my faith. Because why? This is my season of more. More. I, I want to be more like him. I want to have more understanding of who he is and who I am in him. And stop allowing your, search, your situation and your circumstances to dictate who you are. God is my source. He is my strong tower. He will feed me in the midst of famine. Every time you look around, there's something negative going on on the news, in the community, all around us. But he said in his word, he wouldn't leave me nor forsake me. The word goes on to say, those seeing they do not see. This, he's talking about people that's not connected and understanding the kingdom principle. They're still going through the motion of, of life. And guess what? If we're not careful, we'll be those people. We'll be those same people, though seeing they do not see, though hearing they do not hear or understand. And then is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. See, some of us are so caught up in our own church philosophy in our own family tradition, on our own philosophy, on if I do this, and I don't have that, so I can't do this, and I don't have that, so I can't do this, this, this. When are you going to start trusting him? When am I going to trust him to the level that I know I'm capable of? We've been taught all our lives, and especially here at Victory Word, to, to speak those things that be not as though they are. How many times have you just said, I'm going to have a good day in spite of what's going on? I'm going to speak my goodness. I'm going to speak his goodness into my life. I, I, I will. I shall. All of these things that we've been doing over the years, these different slogans and sayings that I will give you and have tell you to post on the wall. I've given all of you eight words. Start using those words this year to speak those things into existence that you want to have, and you must change your atmosphere. Changing your atmosphere is not outward. Changing your atmosphere is here. It's here in the mind. We pray. You said prayer changes things? Yes. And guess what? Things change. And, and, and when we pray, we pray until things change. We have to be more spiritually spiritual minded, spiritually driven, and stop blaming this, that, 
Don't blame the system. Don't blame the man. Don't blame the this. Don't blame your situation. Don't blame your lack of, of education, my lack of finances. All of, The reason we have lack is because we have no faith. Well, my credit score is this way. Don't you believe that if you change your habits and God can change your score? And if he don't change your score, don't you believe that you have enough God in you that whatever it is that you ask in his name, doubting nothing and believing and trusting that he'll do what he said he'll do, that everybody else had to have a perfect score to get that thing. And God, you you had a perfect, and, and you as the believer had a perfect heart and got the same thing without having to go through all of the rigmaroles that other people went through to get it. <clears throat> and then you say, Oh, that's some spooky. That's some, that can't happen. It sure can't because you don't have the faith to believe that it can. And I'm also saying that don't have faith to get something that you know God didn't say you need. That you, you Now, it's one thing. You put yourself out there for stuff. You put yourself out there for stuff, you're going you, you gonna to have a rude awakening. If you're trying to get something because somebody else has it, or is that the thing that God put in your heart for you? That's why this word is so important. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. There are so many people that have heard this word and still don't understand how it works because they refuse to work the word. They want to work the system. And you can't work God's system. No. You have to believe that he is, and he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. And so after, as you seek and chase after God, and when you say chase after, how do I chase after God and he's in me? Because you're chasing after the way he does things. And chasing means to go after. And so I'm trying to go after God's system and how it works in my life today. Why? Because I want more. And you can't have more doing less. You should write that down. I can't have more doing less. I can't have more God and I don't even pray. I don't even worship. I don't even sow. I don't even try to, 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 to sow into other people's lives. Because some of you watching thinking I'm talking about money. And if you're thinking that, that lets me know you're still a churchman and you haven't risen your you haven't risen you haven't you haven't risen to the level of even kingdom consciousness. Because I just said earlier, we ought to be looking for the pearl. Hearing God. Hearing God, there are so many, there are so many uh, examples in his word when the eyes looked dim. But whoever that person was in the scripture that believed him, believed in God, or believed in God's man who was connected, you better have some faith, y'all. Because God is tired of our excuses. No more excuses. What did the word say? Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came and asked him, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever has. Whoever has the heart of God. Whoever has the spirit of God. Why would God give someone more who doesn't even acknowledge who he is? Why would I bless my children with more and they are not taking care of what they have already? Are not reverencing what they have already? Are not thanking God for what they have already? You know in your own self, if you are a mother or a father and you have given to your children and whatever it is you've given it to them, they waste it, 
Do you give him more? Some of y'all do. Some of y'all do. You give them more and they respect you less. I know I'm pushing, I'm digging today, but I'm trying to get that ground furrowed for you to trust God. I didn't say trust me. I said trust God. And everybody's level is different. You have to work towards it. You got to build it up. You got to build, and I'm going to continue to, to challenge you, to push you to do more. Because God said this is the season of more. The God that I serve can bless you in the middle of a pandemic. If he could bless them in the wilderness, if he could bless the Israelites in the wilderness, if he could bless different ones, you've read the stories. Most of you have read and heard different stories about how God brought uh, different ones out of out of situations and circumstances that that it, it had to be God. That's the only way they could have gotten out of it. And you yourself have a testimony today about how God has blessed you as well. You can't ask for more and do less. You can't. It does not work that way. You can ask for more and do less of being in your flesh. Because the less that you are in yourself, the more and more God can fill you up. But too many of us are so caught up in our own self. Our belief systems. Well, I've been doing it this way for so long, I can't change. Well, if you can't change, you can't have no more. If you satisfied with what you have, God bless you. I love you. But if you're looking for more, if you want more, if you want the pearl, what do you have to do? You got to open up your heart. You got to hear God and you got to apply his word. You have to work the word of God because you have to believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them that seek him. The question is, what are you seeking for in 2022? What are you looking for, really? What are you asking God for? Or are you just asking, not really believing you can receive? He will do just what he said he would do. The question is, are we doing what we said we would do? As believers, as kingdom citizens, as having a kingdom consciousness, Sisters and brothers, let's 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 do more for the kingdom. Let's be a blessing. Let's be a benefit to someone and someone to someone else. And how? How do we do that? By letting God use us. Let Him use us. And the way we allow him to use us and to help other people is by letting people know how God has brought us from point A to point B. Have a testimony. Speak it. Tell them, look, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know how I would make it. But by the grace of God, He's brought me a mighty long way. And nobody told me that the road would be easy. But I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Why? Because he knows my name. He knows my name. And so since he knows my name, I should be able to so when he calls me, answer. Victory word is time for us to answer the call. 
It's time for us to move in a direction that God, will, he's leaning in our direction. And that's why this word is so beautiful because where it says, whoever has will be given more. When I read that part, I wanted to shout. Because the more of him, the more and more I give myself to him, the more and more he fills me up. The more and more I come out of myself, my own shortcomings, my own uh, beliefs that I can't do it, I can't, I can't. And he says, you can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He'll give you the strength. Do you want it? Do you want more strength? Yes. Then ask for it. Amen. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and it shall be given. There's things we have to do. And when we when we do the things we're supposed to do, it 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 uh, it activates God. When the when we use our faith, it activates God. When we do those things that he has, has given us to the, the, the authority of in the earth to do through his word, it activates him. And when we try to do it in our own strength, our own way, the way we want to do it, how we want to do it, it doesn't activate him, it aggravates him. So when you when you don't get activated and you aggravate him, all it does is frustrate you. Why ain't this working? Well, what am I not doing? Go back and check yourself. See what's going on in you. Because at the end of the day, Victory Word and Word Family, guess what? We all should want more. And I'm just here to declare, this is your more season. This is your more season. I want more peace. I want more joy. I want more health. I want more happiness. I want more prosperity. I want more financial clarity. I want more. I want more. I want more. So if you want more, you can't do less. Amen? Amen. We're going to pick up on this next Sunday. Part two of your more season. If there's one that would like to give their life to Christ, just pray this simple prayer with me this morning. Lord, I'm a sinner. I want more. I want to be more like you. I, I accept the Lord Jesus the Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I want to be more like you. And so if you prayed that prayer, that's all it took. That's all it took for you to get back in the family. You want to be more like him? Then I challenge you to join a church that's a Bible teaching church that's going to teach you about a true and living God, one that lives within you and will give you the, and will teach you kingdom principles to bring out the true meaning of who God is in you in the earth. And if that church is the Victory Word Church, we're that church that's judgment free zone. We're a, we're a body of baptized believers who don't beat you up. We pick you up and we watch God lift you up. And if you'd like to be a part of our fellowship, call the church office at 313-243-4512. You'll be glad you did. Someone, will call, someone from our office will call you back and they will invite you to be a part of our fellowship and our ministry. Amen. Well, on behalf of myself, Lady T, A.P. Mark Oliver, our staff here at the Victory Word Church, we love you. We love you. We love you. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday. And remember, 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 we are living our future now. God bless you.